I've combined several mods to create maximum replayability for Doom and I'll start by showcasing every mod I used, then I'll explain exactly how to set everything up after. The first mod we're gonna need is Doom RPG SE. This is a gameplay mod that adds a lot of new systems to Doom. I'm about to explain all of them, so pay attention. Doom RPG adds a stat system that allows you to spend points you earn upon level up to increase strength, vitality, regen, capacity, defense, energy, agility, and luck. Strength controls how much damage you deal, vitality controls how much HP you can have, regen is how fast you recover, capacity is how much ammo and items you can hold, defense controls your resistance to damage and knockback, energy is how much you can use your skills, agility is how high you can jump and how fast you can move, and finally, luck controls the quality of items you find. And there's a skill system that implements many skills that are sure to come in handy as the game gets harder. You upgrade your skills by using the same points you spend to increase your stats. There are six categories for skills, healing, power-ups, auras, attacks, summoning, and utility. They're all explained pretty well in the menu. There's a currency system where you can use credits you earn from killing monsters and completing missions to buy weapons and supplies from the shop at the new hub area called the Outpost. There's a random 50% off sale that shuffles every minute. Keep waiting and you might be able to get your hands on a powerful weapon. To enter the Outpost, access the Doom RPG menu, head over to your skills and go to page 6, then left click on Transport. Inside the outpost, there is a disassembling device which will break down weapons into crafting materials and using the same device, you can also assemble weapons using the required items. At the Demon Sanctuary, you can also craft demonic weapons and armor. To start missions, speak to this NPC at the desk. The outpost also includes an arena where you can fight waves of enemies, a shooting range, a skill computer to change the difficulty, an item roulette computer to use your chips, and recharge your pads for your health, energy, armor, and your augmentations. Speaking of augmentations, they are expensive implants that can improve your performance in many aspects like your speed and damage. To enable an augment, you need an augmentation canister. To upgrade it, you need an upgrade canister, and to enable two augments at the same time, you need two slot canisters. Now let's talk about stems. Stems are basically chems that give you a temporary power-up, like how chems work in Fallout for example. Except in Doom RPG, you get to make your own chems using combinations of vials. All you gotta do is open your stems menu, pick a stem size, and start dumping vials into it. Then to use it, simply press the hotkey you assigned. Next, we got shields. Those are pretty much armors you can craft yourself using a body, capacitor, and battery. Accessories are optional. There's a variety of parts, and the better they are, the rarer and more expensive they are. To activate your shield, press the assigned hotkey. But beware, because turning on your shield disables your armor. Then there's the turret system. Turrets are deployable autonomous flying drones that can be crafted by collecting turret parts. Turrets can be upgraded to fire different types of ammo and they will aid you in combat. Next, we have map events. They work like curses from the Binding of Isaac, so they're pretty much mutators for that specific level. There are 18 events in total, but I'll showcase a few. There's an event where the entire level will cause poison damage until you refuel the generator and get it working again, so make sure you always keep a hazard suit on you. And a couple of events cause the level to go completely dark, so buy a pair of night vision goggles from the outpost whenever you can. And this one... Now let's talk about auras. Those are special status effects given to monsters. Think of them like champion enemies from the Binding of Isaac and there are 9 in total. Red means that the monster will unleash a temporary curse on you if damaged at close range. Green gives the monster immunity to splash damage. Pink allows a chance for the monster to resurrect nearby enemies. White makes the monster level up nearby enemies. Orange gives the monster a chance to teleport closer to you. Purple means that monster can heal nearby enemies. Light blue means they can steal energy from you. Dark blue allows them to steal your ammo. Yellow means they steal your and finally, shadow monsters have all the auras mentioned. Here's a few final details about the mod. There are loot boxes that can be found on levels that can contain pretty much anything. Some loot boxes are locked behind the minigame. It's simple enough, just press E on green to unlock. I'll leave you to figure out what the other colors do yourself. Completing levels by finding all secrets, items, and killing all enemies is worth it because you get bonuses. Killing bosses instead of running away from them is also viable because they drop a lot of good stuff like extra lives. I hope I've done a sufficient job of explaining the many details of this mod. Now let's move on to the next mod in this cocktail, Doom Roguelike Arsenal. This is a gameplay mod that adds new classes, weapons, armors, items, and monsters. There are 5 classes and each of them has unique abilities. The Marine consumes 1 ammo per 4 shots and power-ups last longer and give you an increase in fire rate. So if you like weapons that go... 
this is your ideal choice. The Scout is more powerful and accurate when using pistols, they always reveal the map, can move faster, and can double jump. While great early on, I struggled with this class in the late game. The Technician can scrap weapons into mod packs, does more damage with assembled weapons, can carry more mods, and shows items on the map. This class is best for more experienced players, it'd be best to learn most of the weapon recipes before playing him. The Renegade shoots 50% more pellets with shotguns, their armor has 50-80% to more protection, and they can switch weapons instantly. This is probably the strongest class, but you're gonna be pumping and reloading a lot. <laughs> Finally, the Demolitionist consumes half the ammo from rockets and energy cells, is immune to AoE damage, and drops a bomb upon breaking their armor. If you're a fan of fireworks, you're gonna love this class. Yeah. Moving on to the weaponry that comes with DRLA, which is what makes the mod so special. There are seven levels of rarity for weapons. Standard, Exotic, Assembled, Superior, Unique, Legendary, and Demonic. Assemblies are weapons made by installing a certain combo of mods on standard weapons. There are three tiers of assemblies, Basic, Advanced, and Master. There are 220 guns in total. A submachine gun that gives birth to spiders, a massive dildo made of plasma and even the mysterious magnum and some unique weapons have different synergies with exotic mod packs see this jackhammer shotgun it looks normal right throw a sniper mod pack on this thing and it'll function like a whole new weapon look at the spread on this thing you can basically hit every enemy in your field of view let's use the same weapon but this time let's apply the firestorm mod pack onto it instead and it'll fire explosive shells i know you're thinking isn't that a bit op well no because the chances you encounter a unique weapon are one in 50 and probably one in 100 for legendary weapons as for demonic weapons they can be modded using demon artifacts with this much content, you will never run out of ways to obliterate the armies of hell. Even a fair amount out of the 91 armors can be used as weapons. There are many, but my personal favorites are the Terminus Battlesuit, which can fire 4 rockets, the Tesla Bolt armor that can fire a bolt of electricity that kills my frame rate, this badass armor that uses bullets to fire an integrated minigun, and the Gothic armor which when coupled with the Gothic boots gives you a pair of spiked gloves to turn demons into minced beef. And to get the best taste out of your minced monster meat, I suggest you get the DRLA monster pack. It adds so many cool deviations of monsters with different behaviors and attacks. After encountering a new monster, you can open the PDA and learn more about them. You'll also be able to see what type of damage resistances they have so you can exploit their weaknesses. And finally, DRLA adds a variety of backpacks too, but those seem to be removed when combining DRLA with Doom RPG. The next mod we're gonna need is DRLA Extended. This is an add-on for Doom roguelike arsenal that introduces 5 more classes, 6 interactive objects, similar to shrines from popular roguelikes, several familiars, and achievements. Let's take a look at the new classes. The Mechanoid does more damage when you have modded weapons in your inventory and can spot mod packs on the automat. As Nomad, you will discard your inventory after every level, and your luck increases with every completed level. As Nanomaniac, your weapons along with your mods are randomized every level, and melee attacks will generate ammo. As Sarge, you'll be able to mount any rocket firing weapon of your choice on your shoulder, allowing you to fire rockets and fire your guns simultaneously. And by walking over corpses, you turn them into mush for a chance to find some items. As for the Face Sisters, my brain melts every time I try and figure out how to play them, so if you do know how, leave it down in the comments. Now let's see what every shrine does. At the mod pack revisor, you can offer 4 mod packs to get a random mod pack, and the one you get won't be like any of the others you offered. So if you put in all 4 standard mod mod packs, you are guaranteed an exotic mod pack. With the dimensional box, you can store weapons and armors that you can reclaim whenever you want, even if you're playing a new game. Using the weapon fabricator, you can give up 3 exotic weapons for a chance to gain craft parts. The arms appraiser just wants to see an assembled weapon that you may or may not have on your person, and in exchange you'll get to unlock a new familiar. Don't forget to take back your weapon after. There is a shrine you'll encounter on some levels that will grant you a prize upon completing a challenge. A shrine for you to summon unlocked familiars, and the skull shrine will grant 3 demonic artifacts after you destroy up to 1000 corpses using skulls. Moving on to familiars, I haven't unlocked all of them, but familiars are like Pokemon in the sense that they are contained within a sci-fi looking ball, and when released, they will fight for you. Every familiar has their own unique abilities. Finally, to browse your achievements, open the main menu and click DRLA options. Moving on to the third part of achieving maximum replayability for Doom, we need the Obsidian Level Maker. This is the most advanced random map generator for Doom. There are so many variables to 
toy around with until you found the settings that you like most. The maps generated aren't anything amazing, but you'll be delightfully surprised sometimes, then frustrated and annoyed other times. This is just what happens when using a random map maker with Doom, but I really enjoy not knowing what to expect. The secrets created by Obsidian are very fun to discover. Some of them may be hard to spot at first, but after you've seen all of them, it gets a lot easier to spot them. You can generate streets with vehicles, tunnels, caves, sewers, forests, and even your mother's vagina. The possibilities are truly endless with Obsidian, and luckily, it still gets updates from its developers at the time of this video. One of the problems you'll face when playing maps created by Obsidian is navigation. You can get lost sometimes when backtracking, so I grabbed a minimap mod called the Ultimate Classic Minimap. You can customize many aspects of the HUD minimap to your liking, you'll be able to see switches, keys, and even enemies on the minimap. Though the biggest issue I had with playing Doom this way was how repetitive the music was. I was about to lose my mind after listening to... For the 1000th time, and then I found a floppy disk full of midis that contains 461 songs and randomly chooses a song to play every level. Basically, this is a music randomizer for Doom. Right now, it feels like we've randomized almost every aspect of the game, and every experience will be different from the last. So now, we need something to document all this madness. So we're gonna get a mod called War Trophies, which will track how many monsters you killed with each weapon. And the best part about War Trophies is that it's compatible with DRLA weapons. But unfortunately, the mod doesn't track how many times you've died on every level. So for that, I grabbed a mod called Graveyard. This mod will place gravestones where you died on the map. And tombstones are carried over place sessions, so you'll always be reminded of your failures. This can get absurd with Obsidian, because not all the levels are fair, and you will die a lot. Just look at this boss fight, it has turned into a cemetery, and the only person being buried is me. Let's say that after all this you want even more insanity in your playthrough. I highly recommend using Corruption Cards. This is a mod that will make sure you suffer while also laughing your ass off because it has a lot of crazy mutators to levels and monsters. First, choose a game mode, then choose your preferred deck of cards and you're ready to go. There are 134 cards to encounter, including Mystery Eggs that adds lots of eggs containing... Rescue Mission which hides Daisy somewhere on the level, and before exiting you must find it or else. Earthquake and so much more madness, like I mean literal madness. There's a card that summons illusions and a card that makes you start hearing things that aren't there. You will literally lose your mind. Just whatever you do, never choose barrels of fun. There's a card compendium where you basically view all the cards you've chosen before, and you'll find extra information about how each card functions. Now, I'm going to finally show you how to put everything in this video together. 